and welcome back to e before i video reviews today i'm looking at transformers age of extinction deluxe class crosshairs now if you've watched the trailer for the new transformers movie the first teaser trailer this is probably one of the first non optimus bumblebee robots that you saw the dual gun wielding autobot that we really don't know anything about so uh anyway we have this toy and uh, while we have them let's take a thorough look and see if this guy is worth your time and money or your friend's money anyway uh, I was spinning this guy around he, he looks okay he's a good-looking car he's a Corvette he's green uh, he's got some pretty nice graphics now I've heard a lot of people kind of complain about the graphics not being equal we'll get to that in a minute here's the undercarriage looks pretty good there's a head and body okay you can see the whole freaking robot uh, there's some weapon storage the directions don't say that you can store the dual wielding guns but you can put them in his hands and they fit in there pretty well put those away you can see his main weapon uh, does tell you to do that in the instruction you can see it stores right underneath in that peg there's a slot there and a slot on the gun anyway we'll put that aside and uh, let's take a look at the up close details of the vehicle as I focus my camera uh, so here he is. The, the paint applications are pretty good, actually. Uh, the Autobot symbol there uh, looks fine. You've got the uh, green against the black. is really the theme of the whole toy. And uh, there's the paint on the one side of the vehicle. You don't get it here. So some people are complaining that it's supposed to be equal. I don't think it is. If it looks that way in the actual model that this is based off of on the movie... And so be it, but as is, I think it looks all right. Uh, neat looking graphics all the way around. I really like the, uh, the the coating on the tires. You've got the silver paint. Let me give you a close up of the hood here. You can see he's got the uh, kind of Chevrolet looking Corvette symbol there. Black hood scoop. Again, black and green. Love the Autobot symbol there. Uh, so overall, I can't really say enough decent things. Uh, tailpipes in the back, lots of in-plastic molding, no red tail lights. That might have looked cool, but uh, again, this is a deluxe class figure. So uh, all in all, not too bad. Now for the two people wondering, does he roll? Yes, he rolls just fine. All four wheels are touching the ground, nothing really obstructing there. So it's all good. Hold your complaints <laughs> until robot mode. So uh, anyway, that's the vehicle. Let's go ahead and get him transformed. Now the first thing you want to do is flip him over and there you go, he's done! He's done! No, that's not true. Uh, you want to take these arm panels first and pull them down just like that. And uh, just get yourself some clearance because what you're going to do at this point is you're going to separate the shoulders. Just pull them apart. It's a lot more sturdy than you'd think. You're not going to break anything here. So get the shoulders pulled apart. Next you're going to take this back bit and you're just going to lift it up like that. You can kind of pull it up a little bit and just leave it just like that for now. In the front, you're going to lift that piece right there. It's tabbed in, so you just kind of want to lift it up and then pull it out. This one's being a little stubborn, uh, but you can see it's tabbed in. I'm going to throw this in just a second. You take that, you just pull it up like that, and you give it some separation. One thing, you can see this tab that plugs in as real thin translucent plastic. That'll break easier than Jay-Z's nose in an elevator. So you got to be real careful there. Uh, same thing with that bit. That really doesn't tab in good for me on my figure. I actually had to file down a piece of plastic to make that fit. So uh, just be real careful. Because if you file down too much or you push it too much in, you're going to break it. Next, you want to come up to the front. Just dislodge the, uh, the hood like that. You're going to turn them around. Take these wheel bits. And you're going to pull them or push them until they go kind of behind the arm section. It doesn't take much force. You just put your thumb in there, turn it around, and uh, there you go. Now the arms are going to have this weird freakish shape, so you need to get those back in shape by uh, just kind of pulling them down so you have a normal elbow joint. There's a dual hinge there, and so again, you just want to push the side down and uh, hinge him at the elbow so he has somewhat normal looking hands. What robot doesn't like feet? So come down to the bottom, pull these bits down. Now, if your figure has problems standing, it's because you don't have the heel out. So put your finger in there, pull the heel bit out, 
and uh, you've got a much more stable foot. Rinse and repeat on the other side. Straighten out the legs. And we're nearly finished with transformation, believe it or not. Now we're going to take this rubber flap and you're going to pull that out. Some nice detailing on this, but it ends up being ultimately fairly frustrating. Let me give you a closer look as I zoom in my camera. This is real flimsy rubber, and that tab needs to fit inside of a hole on the side of the chest. Right underneath the uh, robo nipple there. You just got to give it a good push in, and it's not an easy task. So we'll deal with that at the very, very end. We'll come around to the back of the figure, and we're going to take this, and we're just going to take this piece right here. Now you can bend this in. The instructions are very, very vague. Or you can push it out like a cape. Now if you do that, it's going to make a big scary noise. But it's not going to break. If it does, it's not my fault. But it's, it shouldn't break. So you can kind of flare that out like a cape. Uh, at that point, we are done with the figure except these annoying tabs. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get these in. Uh, on my figure, the right tab goes in a bit better than the left tab, at least the at least on mine. But uh, I'm going to try and get this in. Uh, this is on my right facing the figure. And I find if you pause your camera and beat the figure up against your wall a few times, it, it's actually helpful. Uh, there's the rear version. So I got him pegged in as much as you can, and at this point, you're ready to stand him up, pose him up. And here we have crosshairs in his robot mode. Some good things here and some not so good things here. Uh, before we get too far into this, let's go ahead and weapon them up like we saw in that trailer. If you're watching this after the movie is released, we've, we're, I'm doing this review before the movie came out. Uh, that's why I don't know much about him. Uh, anyway, uh, he looks good with the dual wielding guns. As a poseable figure that just kind of sits there, he looks okay. It's when you start trying to move him around that you run into problems here. Let's make him do a spin a on the dance floor. You can get all angles here. Whole lot of kibble in the back. Kibble is, uh, you know, in this case, car bits. I almost have a fully formed car sitting on his back. From the front, he looks okay, though. You know, it's when you spin him around that things start to go a bit south. Light piping? Fantastic. Really good here. The eyes just shine blue with just a little bit of lighter, in this case a huge bright light behind him. There's not really a lot bad here, again, when you're just looking at him from the front on. Uh, again, you know, the side profile, it's just, you know, uh, I should, well, let's take a closer look at the face. Well, he's kind of a Howard Hughes type. He's got the little pencil mustache. Uh, it's, it's a neat look, like an old fighter pilot. Goggles on the top need to be painted. Is it just sort of blends in. Got some silver in the abdomen area, and the rest is really just the uh, green and black that we saw in vehicle mode. Not even going to put the other weapons in his hands, because I, I think the dual equal look good. This much of a complete car? Thumbs down for me. I, I just don't like seeing all that on the back. If it flowed better, I, I probably wouldn't mind it, but I'm um, just, just not a big fan of the way that looks. Uh, the tabs, you can see I've got them in. When you start to try to articulate the arms, which I'll get into here in a minute, you'll see that you run into some even more problems. Let's size compare him. Here's Age of Extinction Bumblebee. He's shorter, and we've got a Dinobot. He's shorter, as probably as he should, uh, but he's, he's really short. He's a tiny little guy. Uh, when I put him next to a few other figures, you can see how much taller the deluxe line was just a few short years ago. Look at the light piping on Cyclonus. Anyway, we're not reviewing him right now. Let's keep moving. Crosshairs does not have a ball joint, I don't think. If he does, his head is very limited uh, due to all that shoulder kibbly bit. You just can't move it. Uh, his arms, you can't move them all the way up. You can try, but it's just too much stuff hitting up against each other. So you have very limited arm motion. You do have a swivel underneath the uh, at the elbow joint in that dual joint there. Uh, the hands do swivel. For no real reason. And look at the hollowness there. Just uh, silly. Good in plastic molded detail though. So uh, lots of little gears and, and bits inside of the arm that look good. But uh, you know, the, the bit on the legs I think looks strong. So there's a lot of good things with this figure. But I think with the good, 
uh, no waste movement. You do have the uh, you do have a dual hinge right there. His knee has a swivel and dual hinge in the kneecap. Uh, there is foot articulation forwards and backwards, but no ankle pivot. So I've completely gone over crosshairs, and how do I feel about it? I think as a toy to look at, it's decent. Looks good in both modes, and as a collector, fine. I can put it on the shelf and be okay. As a toy, this is going to frustrate younger kids because the tabs aren't going to go in very easily. Uh, not to mention the fact that you can't really move them around without plastic hitting plastic. I do see kids getting a bit frustrated and this thing perhaps breaking uh, in, in a short period of time. And really, if you think about the target audience for this figure, it skews a bit younger than your average adult collectible type person that wants to put this on a display case. So should you get this? If you need to have all of the figures from the movie, go ahead and grab this guy and put him on your shelf. Otherwise, there's a lot better out there. And stay tuned to my channel as, uh, as I show you more of those examples in upcoming reviews. If you're new to eBeforeI video reviews, welcome. And uh, I've got lots of good things coming, a lot of movie toys coming up. So all you need to do to uh, follow along with my channel is hit subscribe. Tell your friends about me and help spread the word of E before I video reviews. That's enough shilling. A actually, almost. If you want to follow me on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash E before I. If you're on Twitter, I'm at E before I net. And if you're watching this anywhere other than YouTube, all of my videos can be found at youtube.com slash E before I net. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you back here again real soon.